Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're back on the updates 2.2 dev server, and it's time to have a look at the new aviation vehicles or airplanes which are coming to the game in update 2.2. There's a lot of very similar vehicles in this list, uh, there's a lot of F-84Fs, but the main thing is that uh, they are here and they are looking beautiful. So we'll start off with America and move through. The first vehicle is the F-84F. This vehicle is coming in at rank 4. 5 and battery rating 8.7 just to let you know i can definitely see that br changing um, i think it's a little bit high but it's between the f3d and also the a4b in the tech tree this is obviously a modified f84 very different to its predecessors with of course the swept wings and also many other differences it does have access to the 6 12.7 millimeters though which two are sat in the inner wing right here and then the rest are in in the nose of the vehicle with a radar sat at the front as well. This is powered by the Allison J35 A29 with 3490 kgf and then also has a self-sealing tank under it and above uh, the uh, area or behind the pilot I should say. The wings are made of fuel, not really too much of a surprise for the vehicle, it is a jet after all. And then also this thing doesn't have an afterburner, it doesn't go supersonic, it just has pretty good flight characteristics and the extra uh, wings uh, actually give you you know access to better turning capabilities and also a little bit more smoother turning capabilities because of the elevator the secondaries that this thing can carry are HVARs and also 500 pound 1000 2000 and 250 pound bombs uh, this gives it a little bit more uh, in general tonnage compared to some of its brothers e.g the f84g but it does lose out in being able to take multiple types of armament at the same time you can't take bombs and rockets with this thing instead you can either take bombs or rockets which at least to me means that uh, it loses out a little bit in that department even though there's a ton of f84fs coming to the game they all have beautiful skins they all have unique skins even if the flight performance is going to be the same between all of them the next vehicle is the pbm one mariner the mariner is coming into the game at rank 2 but rating 2.0 and it finds itself here in the tech tree between the b18 and the b34 we have had a pbm in the game for a while the pbm3 mariner that is sat here but it is an event vehicle from the sea voyage event which was a while back so to to have a standard tech tree PBM is really nice to see and have it be accessible to all players is obviously great as well. This vehicle is armed with five 12.7mm turrets, two in blisters on the side, one on the top, one right in the tail, and then the last one is right in the front here, meaning that you have a huge crew on this machine of seven individuals, including a pilot and also a co-pilot. You have a ton of fuel in the center of this machine, and it actually has some really interesting bomb bays that I want to show you, which um, are similar across all vehicles. I will also like to remind you that that there was also another PBM which was sat in the files, the PBM-5, which is still not <laughs> made its uh, way into the game. But you can see the wonderful uh, little blisters that are under the, well, I suppose they're behind the engines on either side, which uh, carry the bombs. So they don't actually get carried in the center of the vehicle. Instead, they actually just get carried on the sides, which at least to me is really cool. Now, I'm glad that uh, that is a, a little feature and I'm glad that it's mod modeled really, really well in the game. It also has a beautiful paint scheme in the, f in the form of this yellow and also silver setup. The modifications as well for this machine are mainly based around its armaments. It's able to carry 250s, 500s, 1000s, a mixture of 500s and 1000s, and then 12 100 pound bombs. So it can take all types of bombs, it can't take any rockets, unfortunately it can't carry mines either. Mines are generally quite good on machines like this, but it misses out. Also can get different belts for its 12.7s, which I think overall is pretty nice as well. This is not going to be a fast vehicle, this is not going to be one which climbs crazy or does really anything crazy but it has 
has a decent bomb load and also good defense for the big Kahuga. So I think overall that is quite nice. If you want to see the armor layouts of the F-84, this is also what it's set up like. It has some bulletproof glass for its 38 millimeters on the front and then 8 millimeters behind the pilot. And then you have the A7D. The A7D, or the Corsair II as it's known, is one of those vehicles I know a lot of people have been looking forward to. Not just because it has a massive face on the front of it, it also can carry some ridiculous ordnance and also has access to a pretty powerful engine and some pretty cool electronics too. The A7D is coming into the game at rank 6, battle rating 9.7, and where you'll find this in the tech tree is between the FJ4B and the AV8C. So if you're interested in getting the AV8C, uh, you should research it now, otherwise you're going to have to go through the A7D to get it. Um, which is going to be a bit more of a pain for you. The A7D can uh, get access to a ton of different loadouts, including some which may make a ton of people very happy. So it can carry 2000s, 1000s, 500s, it can carry 750s, 250s, pretty much every bomb in existence can be found on this thing. It also can carry AIM-9Es and AIM-9Js, giving it a 20G maximum overload on its missiles and also a launch range of 18 kilometers you ain't getting away from these things then it gets access to different cannons and different rockets so the rockets it gets are mighty mouse rockets they do pen 290 millimeters 251 145 respectively but the main thing I think a lot of people are going to be interested in is the Gao 13A, the 30 millimeters. There is also 20 millimeter M61s. It also has an M61, which is sat in the center of this machine as well as general armament right here. But these little things here, the 30 millimeter Gao 13s, well, let's just say there's another vehicle which may be coming very soon in the future that a lot of people are interested in which has quite a similar gun to this as I'll show you in a second. The 30mm do have access to different belts, ground targets, stealth, air targets and default. The ground targets does pen uh, 56mm which is not too bad. The A7D also gets access to flares, it also gets access to a bunch of other things as well when it comes to its general usefulness. It doesn't get access I don't think to any camos yet but I'm sure they'll be coming down the pipeline especially in the boxes for this vehicle. So if you want to have a look at what these guns look like, at least in a battle, here you go. Uh, because these 30 millimeters are definitely not going to be something to trifle with. Even though I think there are much better options to take when it comes to this vehicle, um, the general fact is with the 30s, they at least give you something interesting to use. A lot of burts, as you can see. <laughs> A lot of firepower going forward, and a lot of smoke, and a lot of wonderful stuff. This machine is going to be incredibly fun to use. It also has a ballistic uh, computer as well for the bombs, and probably also the rockets, just to let you know. And also an RWR as well. So, good luck with that machine. You can either use it as a fighter, you can use it as an attacker, you can use it as a bomber, you can pretty much use it for whatever you feel like uh, when it comes to the game. The armor as well, you have pockets of 12.7 millimeters all over the vehicle, including 9.5 millimeters in the front of it as well. So a little bit of protection for the pilot and also a little bit of protection for the Allison TF-41A1 jet engine, 6,380 KGF worth of thrust and a bunch of fuel as well in the center of the vehicle and also the wings uh, for a compact look. The next nation to have a look at is Germany and Germany the only thing that it's getting for its aviation is it is getting an F-84F as I said before, there's a lot of F-84Fs coming out, and uh, Germany at least gets the derpy one. You can see with the teeth, you can see with the eye, it's definitely one of the most looking ones of this update, and also I'll show you where it is in the tech tree. It is at the end of the, I suppose, attacker line, as you would see it as uh, the Polkestore is before it, uh, so make sure to research that before you get to the F-84F. Because it's at the end of the line, it does have much higher modification costs 
then the American one and some of the other ones. So just remember to uh, take that into consideration. The Soviets do not get anything for aviation, at least yet, but the British do. The British get two machines. The first one is the Hornet Mark I. Now the Hornet Mark I is very similar to the Hornet Mark III. There are two little key physical differences between the vehicles. You can see right here on the Hornet Mark III, it has kind of like this spine which is going towards the tail. And then the Hornet Mark I does not. It's much more of just a sheer hit into the tail. They also have slight differences right on the end of the tail right here. Uh, whereas the Hornet Mark I is much more pointy, the, the, sorry, the Hornet Mark III is much more pointy, the Hornet Mark I is not, it's a lot more curved. That's really the only differences between uh, the vehicles themselves. Um, it seems like they do carry the same secondary weapons, uh, so none of that is changing or anything like that. And if you played the Hornet Mark III, you will have played the Hornet Mark I. And you'll know that the Hornet Mark I will be very fun to use with the Rolls-Royce Merlin 130 12 cylinder inlines with their 1310 horsepower worth of engine. The wings are also made out of fuel and it does have access to the four 20 millimeter Hispano guns under the pilot and also a little bit of armor on the front as well in the form of the 38 millimeter bulletproof glass and 12.7 around the place and also three millimeter plates behind the pilot as well. Uh, the other thing for Britain to mention is there is another aircraft, isn't there? The Buccaneer S2. The Buccaneer S2, oh, well, first of all, you'll find the Hornet Mark I at rank 4 uh, for the British, so the same rank as the Hornet Mark V, so it'll be useful for researching rank 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And also, with the Buccaneer being rank 6, this thing is the highest tier technical bomber uh, that we have in game even though it is got the attacker symbol on it. You can find it at the BR of 9.3 after the Canberras and this is what it looks like. This is the Buccaneer S2, the new uh, high tier jet that is coming to the game for the British. It has access to a ton of different things but it doesn't get access to a gun, uh, which is one of the things which would be nice if it had it. It has two Rolls-Royce Spey 101 engines, 5,020 kgf each. It also has access to fuel tanks, self-sealing in the center of it, and also these interesting wing spars that are actually really nicely modeled into uh, the machine itself. It also has a really funky air brake, which I'll show you, and also a pilot and another pilot. It also has access to a radar and also a, uh, a bombing computer as well on top of it. The main thing you use this for is obviously its loadouts and since it gets access to no guns it better have some decent secondaries and the secondaries are not too bad actually. Overall pretty good. You start off with 24 500 pounders as a stock loadout and you get access to 1000 pounders uh, then you also get access to different 1000 pounders <laughs> and then AGM bullpups of course uh, you also have an internal bomb bay on this thing so you can take a lot of these loadouts uh, together with each other so what I mean is you can take like a mixture of loadouts with the thousand pounders the aim9b's and also the bullpups but most of them revolve around the idea of rockets missiles and bombs as usual uh, when it comes to these things so yeah you can take a big mixture of different things and as long as you keep that internal bomb bay uh, full you'll be able to do some damage so uh, I'll show you the air brake and I'll also show you the uh, internal bomb bay because it's one of those revolving door bomb, uh, bomb bays or revolving bomb bays and I just really like uh, the setup that they have for those things. It does uh, take off pretty nicely from a carrier as you can see and also it does have a really nice cockpit as well. Uh, the cockpit itself is fully done up uh, for the pilot and uh, as we talked about before it does have uh, the bomb bay but it has the ballistic computer as you can see we're in realistic but we have the arcade bombing so we have the um, air to air missiles the aim 9 bs that it gets we have the AGMs and here is the uh, bomb bay so there you go the bombs are a little bit scared right now that's why they're shivering or maybe <laughs> 
<laughs> or maybe it's a little bug. Uh, but yeah, the Bombay revolves. It looks really nice uh, when it does it. And uh, whatever happens, if you have a bomb load, the internal Bombay will drop first and it will drop with the four bombs and then it will drop the bombs from outer to inner for this vehicle. Uh, so the outer pylons first and then goes inside. Then if you want to have a look at the air brake, it just breaks apart uh, part of the bottom of the tail. Uh, so doesn't that look absolutely magnificent on it? Uh, this is definitely an ugly duckling and eventually turns into a beautiful swan with a little bit of help. Uh, but the major thing is that it just has a lot of quirky and interesting features. Also has a tail hook so you can actually land on carriers, which is pretty cool. And also has access, as I said, to the sidewinders. Don't worry about that secondary missile, I might have a few things attached to the same thing. Oh uh, god. Alright, let's just... Oh, bombs away. Alright, let's set off that AGM. Because otherwise the Sidewinder, guess what? It actually follows the AGM, which is what happened with that last one. So you can defend yourself in this thing. You know, you can, uh, you can attack enemy planes with your AIM-9Bs and also you have your bombs and your missiles to be able to deal with other threats, which I think is pretty cool. It's, it's a fun vehicle, not sure how useful it will be in the game, but at least it will have a use at 9.3. The next vehicle that is on offer is for China, and China gets itself a little rank 1 Battle Racing 1.3 attacker. This is the V11. The V11 is of American origin, and it is very similar to a lot of the other planes that we've seen from America in the Chinese tech tree. has access to a Wright Cyclone R1820 52 9-cylinder radial with a maximum power of 850 horsepower and a war emergency power basically of a thousand horsepower does have access to a tail gunner which has access to a 7.62 the pilot in the front is flanked by a ton of fuel around him so this thing is going to pop uh, when it gets shot in the center which i feel like is where you should shoot this thing because there's no armor protection on it so you can take out the pilot the engine the fuel everything just by shooting it in the center but it does get access to a pretty nice offensive armament it does get four 7.62 millimeter guns with 2,400 rounds. This means that going after light targets such as AA, armored cars, even maybe stuff like artillery around the place will be something that you can do and spade and play this vehicle to excess. It also gets access to some secondary armaments as well in the form of bombs. They're not that impressive, uh, two 250s or one 500, but it is always better than not having 2250s or 1500 to be able to deal with uh, bomb well to be able to deal with stuff like mediums and also heavy tanks or make or giving it a use in stuff like ground realistics so overall a nice little vehicle and uh, as I said adds to a Chinese tech tree which at least I've had quite a lot of fun in the next vehicle is for Italy and Italy is getting itself an F-84F as well. Once again, with a separate skin, you can see it has the lightning bolt on the front, the Italian insignia on the back, and you can find it at the end of the tech tree um, after the SM-92 and 91, and also the F-84G. So this is coming in at uh, this area, so it's going to have very high modification costs, but still a nice vehicle, exactly the same as the other ones that we talked about. And you want more of the same? Well, you've got more of the same. The first one is the standard tech tree uh, F-84F for the French. This has one of the more interesting skins with the yellow line going around it, which is really nice nice and then also some beautiful insignias and also a flag on the back of the tail here. You also have access to a premium version of the F-84F for the French. It is an Israeli version of uh, the vehicle and you can find them both in this area. So the F-84F is just before the MD4522C for the French and then the F-84F Israeli is a rank 5 so it's going to be useful at grinding out the whole tech tree for France. This thing is coming in at 8,560 GE, so it's going to be quite an expensive vehicle, but also quite useful at grinding out a lot of the jets for France which aren't exactly great, such as these two here, the MD-452 and also the other MD-452, definitely struggle in the game, so having any help 
uh, be possible is always a positive. It also comes with a really nice skin as well. So that is all of the F-84s which they're adding. They're adding five of them in total for four separate nations. I'm definitely getting Starfighter flashbacks once again. The last set of aviation vehicles, which is going to be available in Update 2.2, is for the Swedish. And the Swedish are getting two variants of the Saab 105. The first one is the Saab 105G, coming in at rank 5, a battle rating 8.0. This is going to be coming in as a standard tech tree vehicle at uh, after the SK-60B right here. So that will be very much nice of it. And uh, with that said, it uh, is coming in with some upgraded armament over the SK-60B. The second one we will tackle um, just in a little bit, but the Saab 105G has access to some pretty nice things as well. As the standard general layout as the SK-60B, which has been in the game since update new power, has access to the general electric engines, the J85 GE-17Bs with 1220kgf each, the wings are made of fuel, so is the center of the plane, but what it gets access to is some crazy loadouts. So this thing gets access to RB-24Js, uh, so these are incredibly powerful missiles, um, these are way better than anything that is around the BR of 8.0. They have a maximum overload of 20 Gs, a launch range of 18 kilometers, and a rear lock aspect of 5.5. At the same time, it also gets access to RB24s. These are much more like AIM-9Bs, so still very powerful for 8.0, but not the best. It does still get access to the cannons, the 30 millimeters that are so devastating on the SK-60B, and it also gets access to a bunch of bombs, 1,000 pounders, 750s, and 500s, and also the rockets as well. The main thing that this vehicle is missing when it comes to the SK-60B and also the premium Saab is the fact that it does not get access to any of the uh, to any of the um, AGMs uh, which are available for the vehicles. So it does get access to really good air-to-air -air missiles, it does get access to nice bombs, but it doesn't get access to bringing along the 30 millimeters and air-to-airs. You know what does though? The premium. The Saab 105 uh, OE, it, it does get access to the AGMs and also gets access to the 30 millimeters alongside the wonderful RB24Js. It also gets access to rockets, the 7.5 centimeters, the M56Ds, and also the 14.5s. But who's going to use them when you can get a loadout like this? 20G overload rockets plus 30 millimeter. Uh, Gun pods is insane for a vehicle at 8.0, especially since this is just going to be a better version of its tech tree counterpart for 8,560 GE. I definitely think this should be a higher BR than its tech tree counterpart, even though it's missing bombs. We all know when it comes to this machine, this is going to be used as an out and out fighter, just like the SK 60 is, with backup support from its 30 millimeters. Having uh, air-to-air missiles, which are equivalent to 10.3, 10.7 missiles at 8.0, plus two 30 millimeters, plus incredible maneuverability, and plus the ability to be able to even bring the AGMs, if you want to, the RB-05As, along with the um, RB-24Js, is kind of insane for a machine. This is looking like a really nice premium in the game and I'm hoping that it goes up in BR so I won't have to make a video talking about how ridiculous it is that this premium is the same BR as a standard tech tree one while just being better and having the combination that is required to absolutely stomp in a realistic. That is the aviation additions when it comes to War Thunder and update 2.2. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank John Ryman, Universe, Conte Baraka, E Love Goat, Trigger Hippie, Eugene's Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez B. Young, and also Hans Fagellen, Sebastian Mizon, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.